Welcome to On The Chain. This is Chip along with co-host Jeff. What's going on tonight, Jeff? What is happening, Chip? Good to see you. Good to see you, and Jeff. I know your uh, your voice is kind of like it's timid right now, so we're gonna le- we're gonna let it re- relax a little bit. So you'll be speaking here and there, but mostly providing comic relief when you can. So <laughs> I want to talk about XRP. Is it a security? Is it not a security? I think we know the answer to that, but hmm. hmm but it turns out we keep talking about we keep hearing a lot about the Great Reset. Turns out the Great Reset is crypto and decentralization. You ready to take this one, Jeff? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go! Welcome to On The Chain. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to On The Chain. Welcome to everybody. Hey, we're back, Jeff. Sunday. We are back, Sunday. Man, it's good to see you. We didn't have a show yesterday because you were a little bit under the weather, trying to to come back from whatever this is, this thing you got. It would have been rough trying to talk, (laughs) so it would have been brutal. Yeah, it would have been brutal, and you know, I just was. Uh, Man. I thought about doing a show around eight thirty that morning, and I said, "No, probably it's too late." <laughs> nope, not gonna happen. <laughs> By end of day Friday, I was losing my I was losing my voice, and that was yeah, just rough, man. Sometimes when I travel and I'm talking all day, that'll happen to me just because you, you're just not used to talking. We'll talk here for an hour straight, which is even more difficult if you're doing it solo. But guys, I want you to j- drop in if you're watching on the rewatch. Drop in where you're from, the city the country where you're coming in from. We'd love to see where all the OTC family is located. It's great uh, you know, to see you guys in here. Jeff, you want to mind popping some of those up while we get this puppy started and get on the road. And you know, it's funny. We, you know, we were talking before this going live and there's this awesome video of Brad Garlinghouse. We'll probably circle back to it. We played it before, but in rewatching it, there's That's so much, there's so much good stuff in there. And I think we have to, Kind of revisit that. We'll we'll go into that uh, before we get started on that. Though we're going to jump into some some SECV Ripple stuff, and it was really interesting to see this article on uh, a pretty. What's that? Just throwing up some. We've got Bali in the house. Sydney in the house. Oh, Bali, nice, very nice. Sydney in England, the house. England, Vegas, baby. Vegas. But the country too, because you could be from Sydney, Omaha, if there's such a place. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. You could be like from Sydney, uh, you know, some other place, <laughs> Sydney, Pennsylvania, Sydney, Sydney, Omaha. Believe me, there's, 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 <laughs> I'm there's sure a, there is, <laughs> there is a Miami, Ohio. People are like, I'm from and Miami. Like, cool. We love palm trees and everything. <laughs> no, and then, it gets pretty cold up there. There is a Miami, a Ohio. Solid so, point. And then Jacob's ladder coming all the way from Long Island. Long Island. That's L I N Y. That's right. It's, we have a, pal matthew uh, oh and by the way we are streaming over on rumble so if you guys check out if you're on rumble check it out you know very cool i think it started if it yeah, didn't we'll see start if... then maybe it'll start eventually but uh actually there's one person watching over on rumble so What's as we up? start getting some following you guys don't have to depart where you are right now but you know as we start gathering uh some people over there on rumble it's gonna be great yeah, and we're going to probably be doing, uh, we're talking about maybe doing two shows a week that will be just Rumble only. And that way we can open it up. We can say whatever we want because that's how Rumble rolls. So it's going to be really good. But jumping into the story right here, because we get a lot of geopolitical stuff. And sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes there's words and other magic words you just don't want to say. So you got to be careful. Choose them carefully. <laughs> magic and- words. They're magic because they can make you disappear, Jeff. <laughs> See what yeah, I'm saying? <laughs> just like God. XRP. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's magic. It's magic. It's a different kind of magic where you disappear and you didn't realize you were going to disappear. <laughs> you that didn't type realize of thing. you were going to disappear. They disappear is, you. So this one was on AMB Crypto, which is a pretty well-known uh, publication out there. Yeah, that's it. Can't be 100% sure. By the way, if you want that on a shirt or a beach towel, I don't know. It's summer's coming. Uh, unless you're on the other side of the world or down below, then your then your seasons are reversed. But anyway, you can go ahead to our merch store on the chain dot shop and get that. But this is interesting because it's funny that it seems, Jeff, like almost everybody is starting to talk about this. There was a time where it was just one of these specific things and not there wasn't a lot going on about it. But they're starting to look, and it's funny when you when you look at the sources they're starting to pull. So you see uh, Jimmy Filen here, here he is, you know, 
um, he always is the first one to put as soon as that hits anytime new any new uh, filings hit on the docket for the uh, CCV Ripple, he goes ahead and tweets those out. This one here, he uh, yeah. So the uh, the SEC has requested a two day extension to respond to Ripple's motion to strike out a supplemental expert rebuttal That's report. From, of course, yeah. I mean, more delays. I mean, you got to know the SEC is involved here. From Doctor <laughs> Albert real. Metz. Uh, however, many within the crypto community saw this as a move to buy time or stall the proceedings. And that's kind of how we all see that. Here you have Jimmy Filan tweeting this out. Uh, SEC v. Ripple, the SEC filed its response. And we can go ahead and take a look at this right over here. Let me see if I can open a new tab. There we go. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching on Rumble, would that qualify them as being on the chain rumblers? Yeah, that'd be rumblers, man. OTC rumblers. Yeah. OTC rumblers, man. I gotta light that. Let's go, Let's go rumblers. So it starts off with the. Uh, hang on a second. How long is this thing, Jeff? Good God! Like, wow! Holy cow, man! Let's go Look to go this. to Exhibit A. That must be the most exhilarating point of. Uh... That's it. That's all it is. Just a bunch of letters, Jeff. No. So man. what are they talking about? Playing if against Ripple Labs, Brad Bradley Garlinghouse. Videotape deposition of Albert Metz, PhD, New York, New York, Friday, February 18th. So they were, they were busy doing depositions last month. And, and then the type gets smaller and more difficult to read. And yeah. So this is just the transcript basically of everything. Videographer on the record, start of tape number one. Tape number one. Jeff, how many tapes did they go through here? But anyway, this is uh, that's it right there, just to kind of get an idea of it. And um, yeah. you gotta you gotta love the you know the the legal expertise that's participating. The one thing that we see in this space across the board is there are so many internet sleuths and legal sleuths out there sleuths. that have been sleuths. Sleuths. <laughs> They're kind of like the youths. Like the youths. Yeah. Sleuths. <laughs> sleuths. <laughs> but the sleuths. You know, but it's it's really great to see all the investigative uh, and and just to see what people are coming up with. You know, James obviously is always on top of these motions, and it just it just amazes me. You know that all the time the SEC man they just they're constantly looking for delay. They're constantly tripping over their shoelaces. I don't know why they they keep tying their shoelaces together. <laughs> I don't know, but that was always fun when you were a kid. You know, you you know, while somebody was sitting there, you take it a test, you just tie their shoelaces together. That's perfect. Get up and fall and do a face plant. It was really great yeah. stuff. You don't do anymore because yeah, yeah you'd like to do you that. Can't to get, a, you'd like get to away with that. that anymore. <laughs> can't get away with that anymore. It'd be like it's, it's all kinds of all kind of pranks you used to be able to do. And then if we look at this, the SEC requests the court deny Ripple's request to strike the supplemental rebuttal report. Of course, legendary over on Rumble. So it's legendary. The regulators believe that the motion was established to prevent Dr. Metz from giving his expert opinion about the lawsuit. The filing noted Dr. Metz's expert report is an analysis that determined specific announcements made by Ripple at the time of ICO affecting XRP's price. Wait a minute, Jeff. What ICO? There was an ICO? What, what just happened here? That's Who's what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> what? Well, Wait. Mr. what? Dr. Metz. His expert report analysis determines specific announcements made by Ripple at the time of ICO. I don't even know what that means. What, what are ICO? they referring to? What no, ICO? I think that's why they want to strike it, Jeff. But uh, SEC cited three main reasons why the defendant's motion should be denied. I don't know who's I don't. I, I don't even understand what's going on in this article. The what SEC, the SEC, and the opposition said that Ripple's trying to rule out Dr. Metz's expert opinions in this matter. Dr. Judge Torres should decide. This says the motion disregards the procedure. Commission asserted that the Ripples is seeking an unfair advantage in the lawsuit. Oh, yeah, they're seeking an unfair advantage as if they did something wrong, right, Jeff? They're seeking this. Un they have a leg up and they're seeking a unfair advantage. The agency claims the expert testimony will be critical to the trier of fact. That's the word you don't see a lot, often, especially together, a trier, a trier, a trier of fact. fact. SEC mentioned the defendants could show no genuine prejudice as the report's not an appropriate sanction under federal uh, rule civil piece, page 26 and 37. Nonetheless, James Filan opined 
that the SEC's response was poorly uh, crafted. And here's Man, you gotta why. Love it. <laughs> you gotta love it. That is great. This is so Man. much drama, Jeff. It is a lot of drama, but you know, to the why movie. does the SEC keep falling into this? I mean, I well, just, I really, it's just fairly to quote, unsettling. To quote Daddy G, sometimes you're going to have to go into court and take a loss once in a while as you are trying to prop up those pillars of, of uh, what are the, what does he call them? The pillars of enforcement. The pillars of enforcement. Now, here's why Jimmy Filan says it's poorly written. He says, what a poorly written response. It's repetitive, a sign of a weak argument. It wrongly accuses Ripple of failing to follow proper procedure when the failure was the SEC's and almost comically offers to consent to reopening a deadline the SEC blew. Hmm. That right there is why we've we've got the A team, you know, we've got John E. Deaton, got Jamie, Jimmy the K Filin. I mean, this That's is right. just A team stuff. Reddit, the whole face plant thing. And the funny, so this is funny. I mean, they can write this thing the way they want, but this is what it takes to see a, an attorney reads this, says it's ridiculous. It wrongly accuses Ripple of, of an improper procedure. When it turns out, it really was the SEC. And then they offer consent to, uh, to re reopening a deadline that they, in fact, did blow. So That's true. And, and you know, Chip, as a wise, mud, a wise man once said, you've got to know when to hold them. No one to fold them, no one to walk away, and no, no one to run. to run. That's right. <laughs> you never count your money when, when you're sitting at the, at the table. table. There'll be time, time enough, enough for counting count. when the dealing's done. When the Hear dealing's that, done. Daddy G. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes it's as good as a an old Kenny Rogers uh, tune. That was the gambler, right? The gambler. <laughs> that was, was the, the gambler. That tune? <laughs> wow, pulled that out, man. Sometimes you do now have to know when to hold That's them, when good. to fold them. <laughs> And the problem is, is that Daddy G doesn't know when to fold them ever. He that's why, he's, that's why he says sometimes you have to go into court and take a loss. <laughs> well, the response sparked reactions from interested parties in the lawsuit. For instance, attorney Jeremy Hogan, another phenomenal attorney, a famed lawyer, famed lawyer. I use phenomenal. He's famed. Uh, had an unfair, uh, unfamiliar stand in the, on the matter, attorney Hogan said. Not having the SEC expert address something obviously comes from Ripple's experts was a mistake. Now they're trying to fix it. That's not a good position. What's different? That's a What's bad different position. This time? That's right. They're kind of uh, pedaling backwards. Yeah. Uh, XRP was ever okay. Let's see this and Dusty Crypto and what else we have Break here. Out yeah. soon. Yeah, of course. I've been hearing that for the last seven years, Jeff. Uh, such steps could provide a trigger to reach close to the magical $1 mark given the past victories. That's kinda, Are you talking about SHIB? I'm talking that, about... No, no. Is that the charge for SHIB? No, 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 no. That's it. But that's it. That's um, it. It's an interesting article, but it's great to start seeing stuff in the in the the out there in the press. Like It just yeah, seems it's like it's starting to come to a head here with all this. It really is, man. You know, thank God for the uh, legal sleuths that are out there <laughs> once again. No, well, and not only that, but the Twitter sleuths. I mean, the Twitter sleuths the have really Twitter turned sleuth. this upside down, turned it on its head. Just uh, fantastic. Thank so, God, man. Digging through every little bit of printed uh, material, video material, audio material, <laughs> legal material. Yeah, you know, and it's phenomenal. It really is. And, you know, unfortunately... Once again, you know, Chip, here's what I find unsettling. This government, you know, those that are in charge, those that are appointed, those that are hired in that don't represent the people, you know, are, are holding a significant amount of power and they don't really seem to care, you know, but they're being, man, they're being outplayed at every step. Look at Vince Scully says, uh, wait, bureaucrats moving goalposts? Hmm. <laughs> Gee, that almost <laughs> never happens, Jeff. That never happens. I've so never weird that to happen. see that. So weird when that happens. So, look, had a, saw this saw this tweet, and uh, look at this here. So, Bitcoin Magazine put this out. Bitcoin, uh -huh. Bitcoin's Lightning Network can currently perform over a thousand times as many transactions as Visa. Forty million, so, huh? Forty million transactions a second. Yeah, apparently, that's a, yeah. that's an impressive graphic. Yeah, that's about as impressive as it gets, Jeff. But they like so. So then Solana is 65,000 transactions per second, Visa 24,000, PayPal 193, mm -hmm. Ethereum 15. 
Okay. Hmm, nice. Kind of weird how they left XRP out of the equation, right? That's not even in there. Hmm. And so our boy Pomp over here, uh, Anthony Pompliano, oh. says Bitcoin's Lightning Network is the most advanced payment system ever created. Ever, Jeff. Ever. 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 That's like the whole history of the world. From the dinosaurs, <laughs> pre-dinosaurs, you know, the... Uh, the uh, tar pits, all yeah. that stuff, the ice yeah. age, all the way up through history, the most advanced ever. And of course, uh -oh. I took a little liberty with that because I had to, uh, let me rephrase this here. So I, I had to little, do my little laugh emoji here. You know, Jeff, the one where you're trying not to laugh, you really try to hold back that laugh, you know, Jeff? Yeah. Hey, and Clarence then, Thomas was just uh, hospitalized. Uh-oh. I guess that since I guess he was hospitalized two days ago, but they just announced it today. Oh boy. Well, that's not good. No. So anyway, you missed the emoji. But anyway, I gotta go. We gotta go. I missed the emoji. You missed the, uh, well, it's a it's a it's a meme, not emoji, but it's a meme. But anyway, so I thought that was just come on. Pom -pom. It's the most advanced system ever created. No one's ever created anything ever close to that, Jeff. You know what you call that? Pompaganda. <laughs> Papaganda. God, man, there the OTC family is just on again every single night. I'm astounded by just how brilliant. There you go. You know, it's just a just the comments. And the thing is, there's way more comments that we put up on screen that are fantastic. You don't just get I to them all. Thomas, who Clarence Thomas. Clarence Supreme Thomas. Supreme Court Justice. Supreme Court Justice. Probably one of the few Supreme Court justices that actually has a brain, to be honest. Loose and it's been consistent. Yeah, and it's been consistent. Uh, period. That's it. Doesn't go. Does it, my favorite justice, uh, without a doubt. So hope he uh, hope everything works out really well. Yeah, here. You got you got Jay Hoddle here, who's a uh, big supporter here on the chain. Maybe a future <laughs> movie title: Tidal Wave, the Ripple ah. versus SEC story. Ooh. Brought to you by On the Chain Media. Beautiful. <laughs> There you Documentary go. <laughs> time, Jeff. I like the way you're talking there. That sounds great. <laughs> so as we get into, so this one here, another John Deaton tweet here. So Stefan oh, yeah. Huber. I like this one. You know what I like, Jeff, here is interesting is that, you know, Stefan Huber, everyone's putting the dot, you know, ETH, dot ETH. Everyone has dot ETH. And then everyone yep. started putting dot XRP. He Stefan Huber went right to dot justice. You know, I wonder what you think. I wonder <laughs> what's behind that. Stefan Huber dot justice. I wonder what you behind gotta love all it. that. You gotta love it. <laughs> That's Just perfect. It's fantastic. So he says, he says it's true. The SEC destroyed the Madoff files. Uh, I'm a loss for words, oh, yeah. and I'm sorry. The US is lost. Dude, this is this is a little bit shocking, and this is uh, Deaton, I think, has some. Really yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. But uh, to me, the fact is they had a whistleblower for seven years. Now I was talking about the whistleblower for seven years, said it was uh, poked all kinds of holes in it, came to the SEC. Seven years. SEC did nothing. I mean, it sounds yeah, like this is 40 that. or 50 years ago. It's not 40 or 50 years ago. When did this case conclude? It was 11 years ago. Yeah. I mean, we're talking. When they destroyed them. We're talking recent. They like destroyed him eleven years ago. Yep. Well, sometimes you got to get rid of the evidence because they probably destroyed the evidence that said they were contacted for seven years by. It. There's some really good, some really good stuff you could read on this. But anyway, John Deaton said this goes to show you that serious changes must be made by Congress as it relates to the SEC. The SEC institutionally believes it is above the law and the rules don't apply to it. Commentary on that, Jeff. Man, I think he says everything. <laughs> I mean, that's here's here's the problem, you know, is that, you know, the SEC is not made up of elected officials. Um, it's made up of appointed officials that answer to those who appoint them. So uh, as you can distinctly see, those uh, who are in charge, i.e. the chair uh, person, um, is somehow um, committed to supporting those who put him in that position. <laughs> So wh whatever, whatever you want to read into that, whether it was economically motivated or politically motivated, uh, they don't necessarily answer to the people as much as they, you know, we want to believe that they do. I don't believe that an appointed person answers to the people. And it's, it's unfortunate. We have a lot of bureaucrats uh, mm -hmm. that are hired, that are lifers, that are on pension, 
that can't be fired from the government. And that's a problem, you know? And so when you have, you know, rampant uh, pensioners uh, in our government uh, that are now there for their job, uh, then you have, you have a major, you have a major issue. You have a major crisis at hand. And, you know, especially when these agencies are run by individuals that might have other political agendas or other, you know, outcome agendas, we don't know. So, and that's what Deaton is referencing. It needs to be fixed. And that's, it's a big agency chip, you know, the SEC. Now we're seeing the overreach of politics, you know, seeping into the SEC as they're trying to reference uh, corporate uh, environmental uh, policy as somehow being now relevant to the SEC. Yeah, Jeff, it's just, uh, it's incredible to me. I mean, I just, I really, there, there's so much corruption everywhere. It's, it's infected the entire world. And I do feel like, I do feel like the people are getting a little bit wise to it, starting to wake up and people are saying like, you know, we're kind of done with this. Yeah, it's great when it doesn't really meddle into your, in your world, but what it does just gets a little bit weird. I, th this is a weird tw tweet that I saw by decrypt, you know, decrypt that publication. Mm-hmm. This is a, uh, I don't understand this at all, but this is a uh, cool frog. Yeah. You see them? Yeah. So let's throw them up there. So this is it. So they say that, uh, so the, pe r how rare Peppy NFTs reclaim Peppy the frog and why they remain relevant. Um, Peppy the frog isn't just one of the oldest internet memes. He's also one of the oldest NFTs after Peppy was briefly associated with the alt-right the Web3 reclaimed the meme. Now, they, they can say the alt-right all they want. Andreas Pepinopoulos. I know the uh, the Pepe, uh, the rare Pepe, uh, the whole, how it got it back. I mean, who, what, what, what kind of, I'm just. I don't even what, know what, what that means. What are they talking about? <laughs> what, do they get a JPEG back? They get the NFT back? What did they reclaim the picture? Yeah, I mean, the, it's the whole thing is just, it's kind of the whole thing is just kind of silly, Jeff. I mean, the whole thing, it's like, well, so and so owned it and then they owned it. And then, no, it's some. And then the person that really did it didn't get any. Uh, go ahead. Throw no it variety. Just not throw up the K HUD. Hell yeah, Chip. Big Damn time corruption. corruption. The corruptions, it's just in, infiltrated everything. It's just seeping into every orifice, man. It's Everywhere, just, man. It's gotten out of hand. And, uh, you know, it's funny because some John Deaton's always on fire, but I mean, his tweets are really good. I wanted to read this other one. Um, and this was somebody asking him a question here. Let's uh, let's see this here. Let me look here. Okay, let's look at that. And here we go. Okay. So we're going to drill down on this one because I think this is really worth looking at. So Dave Robertson, he's better known as at Global Banking. He was asking a question. He said, what's the basis to your argument that XRP is more decentralized than ETH? So let's see what John Deaton said. So John Deaton, first, I, first this is John Deaton's uh, tweet. First, I said, arguably. Second, I don't believe today's ETH or today's XRP meet the definition of a security. To answer your question, here are a few reasons one could argue the XRPL is more decentralized than the Ether network. So... He put out one of his uh, tweet threads here. Uh, the XRPL is based on a consensus protocol relying on validator nodes to record and verify transactions. It achieves consensus without incentivizing any party, unlove, unlike proof of work. For consensus to be reached, at least 80% of the validators must agree. Therefore, therefore, there are over 170 validators with 900 nodes operating across the globe. Ripple runs six validators. Okay, let's let's do some number stuff here, Jeff. Six, number 170, project. 900 nodes. And then so out of the 170 validators, Ripple runs six of them. Okay, so that's a very small uh, minority there. And it says, which means that it controls less than 4% of all validators on the network. And it, it wasn't too long ago that that was even a higher number. It was like 7 or 8%. And as more validators get added, it'll become even less. So therefore, although Ripple owns 51 to 53% of the outstanding XRP, it does not provide Ripple with power over the XRPL. And Jeff, this is something I think is really a really important point to talk about. 
Because I think sometimes I think people, I don't think they, I think they just misunderstand it. I'm not sure they get it wrong. I just don't think that they understand. People are always talking about the escrow. Well, Ripple owns the escrow. Ripple owns the escrow. Great. It doesn't have any power. You know, it doesn't have any power of the XRPL. That's completely decentralized. So right. sometimes people conflate these things where they they collapse them into one, one thing. And in fact, they're not. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought up the... Um the escrow because and you're right a lot of people don't realize exactly you know you know the uh the overall control mechanism within within that escrow and it doesn't lie with ripple and i think they made that statement multiple times and david schwartz brought it up but that power still lies within the hands of uh of the validators if they decide they you know they decide to vote and the validators vote and they want to destroy the escrow well there goes the escrow yeah. Yeah. And then a lot oh, yeah. of people, a lot of people think like, well, the whole reason this SEC case dropped anyway is because they want the escrow, Jeff. They want the escrow. They got to get it. They got to pull it back. They got to have and it. That's it. It's an interesting, you know, it's a, it's an interesting dilemma, you know, because right now, and, and one of the reasons of putting, you know, this, I, this notion of the great reset in the title, right? There's so many people talk about this great reset. I think about it more like along the lines of Charlie Brown with the great pumpkin, when he goes out to the great pumpkin patch or the pumpkin patch and he's waiting for the great pumpkin and the great pumpkin never shows up. But so you have this great reset, right? And this, this whole notion that everything's gonna be set to what? What's gonna happen, Chip? Uh, you know, are, is it gonna be the undoing of our, our, of our economic infrastructure? Are banks gonna implode? You know, is everything going to end? Is everything going to go back to zero? Are we going to have a complete monetary switch over, you know, from fiat to to crypto? Is XRP going to be, you know, the one asset, you know, to rule them all? You know, what what's going to happen? And there's so much, you know, conversation over this idea of the Great Reset. But there is a no, I mean, there is some, you know, there, to me, there there is a little bit of, you know, reality to everything that's happening right now because we're we're watching an unprecedented time where debt is gone so far out of control it's beyond the point of no return at this point you know and so what do you do do you have a debt jubilee and you set everything back to zero as <laughs> the whole world say we're having a, a major reset uh, because if we're the only ones that say we're having a great reset but other parts of the world say they're not you know chip you know with china and saudi arabia and russia and all these other countries out there now looking at the u.s dollar as a reserve currency saying we're not going to support it anymore is that the great reset what what are your thoughts yeah i mean there's so much out there well first of all the the reset that we keep hearing a lot about there yeah the sec has that's a good point k hud the sec is running a validator that's a very good point a lot of people don't know that either and it's it's almost bizarre but yeah they are thank you for pointing that out okay i appreciate that the thing about the great reset i'm gonna be careful how we language this but there's different factions that have different ideas what that might look like and some of them think it looks like well in 2030 you won't own anything but you're gonna be so happy because you're gonna have goggles on 24 7 you're gonna be living in this mystical myth mythical world where everything's fantastic it's just gonna be great you won't own anything though so but I think what you're talking about, Jeff, the, the reset that we need to happen, and this is where, and the funny thing about this is in the United States, three times, the, the founders and framers of the, of the, of the U.S., they, 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 were, they talked incessantly about the idea of a central bank, third party, a debt instrument that gets loaned, and this happens, at all, this is all over the world, this isn't unique to the United States, but they've been kicked out two other times. And in the early 1900s, they came back in. And this is, and the, usually these systems don't last long. So the whole idea, the whole idea of, of, a, of a monetary system built on debt to a third party that has, that nobody has any say over whatsoever. Uh, not only that, but how many central banks have been audited, Jeff? How many of them? Probably almost none have been audited. I know the, here we are, we have, we, this is over a hundred year system in place. There's never been an audit of the Fed. Why? Because they're a third party. They don't bow to any country. They don't care. All they know is they can, you know, either print money at will here in the U S or they can do whatever they want. They can. And the two things that they're supposed to be doing in the U S is the, 
is to control the value of the of the currency uh my, m basically maintain or inflation they're supposed to stop inflation that and big buzz are there they're also supposed to uh keep low employment but big buzz are there so they don't bring any value and that's that's it and there's so much written about this that we don't need to talk about it tonight but it's one of the greatest stories ever told about how this but the central bank came back into play again you had it had been abolished, and I believe it's going away. It has to go away. Uh, the Fed needs to be crushed. All the central banks need to go away. And the whole idea of central is going away with the idea of blockchain and decentralization. So kicking or screaming, whatever they like, they don't like, we're moving down that road. People are tired of it. It's been a trying couple of years for people. And, you know, it just don't have to sit back and take it anymore. That's part of it. So That's a, that's a great point. And, you know, one thing that we're seeing and this really has to do with you know this notion that you just brought up and you know you have the central bank you have the central bank control uh, and the question is you know are all the authorities out there uh, on board with this notion of allowing these central banks to maintain you know full un you know fettered control and one thing that we're seeing here with the arab monetary fund so the Air Monetary Fund is looking for options other than a central bank digital currency. So obviously, you know, the writing is on the wall that things are being pushed in a certain direction, you know, as, as we're talking about, and they're trying to digitize the economy. Um, the question is, <clears throat> are we all buying into this notion of CBDCs, centrally banked, central bank, you know, digital currencies or centralized, centrally controlled uh, digital currencies, or like the the Arab Monetary Fund is identifying. Well, you know, maybe that's not the right way to go. So the AMF, the Arab Monetary Fund, which is a sub organization of the Arab League, has named global payment network RippleNet as a possible alternative. You know, to a CBDC, but they're looking at a number of different options out there. Some of them in this article don't really make sense, but. Basically, they're saying there are many risks associated with international positions on local CBDCs, ranging from the risk of digital dollarization, international spillovers, the impact of international role of currencies. If a CBDC is used outside of its jurisdiction successfully, this could lead to a local currency losing its function as a medium of exchange, unit of account, storage of value, and eventually raises financial stability uh, risk. Um, but then here's here's who they're looking at. And I don't understand how they can be looking at Swift. That makes no sense to me. Uh, but then you have Revolut. I guess, you know, it's a possibility um, wise. I, I, these are like payment solutions. RippleNet, you know, which we know, you know, but S Swift doesn't make any sense. Wise doesn't really make any sense. Revolut, maybe. I don't know, mm. but the only one that really makes sense if you're going to look for a solution for a CBDC is that you have to build your CBDC on something. And that would be based on some of the solutions that RippleNet has. Right. But man. Well, you want interoperability. That's the other key thing. Otherwise, it's useless. That's at some point going to travel outside of whatever that country is. So that that's the other big the other big thing there that there has to be but but the funny part about it is when people are talking about swift these aging systems and the whole thing we're, we're going through a transformation on earth right now i mean we have decentralization it's funny it's called a cbdc right central bank digital currency but if you remove bank and digital it's a centralized currency that's really what it is so if you go like hey who's excited about a cent another centralized currency nobody you could see a centralized bank currency, currency the CBC. Uh, you know, the mm -hmm. whole idea is it's centralized. So what they're what in a weird way they they talk about this with crypto and blockchain, blockchain and crypto, but a CBDC has nothing to do with that. It's not as it's not it's not a cryptocurrency, and all it is a digital digital representation representation of failed fiat currency. You just because you digitize it doesn't make it to better. Well, it's digital now. Well, for all intent and purposes, it's digital now. So 
But Jeff, you know, here's something funny. You know, if a lot of people outside the U.S. probably don't know who Tom Brady is. Tom Brady is a, an American football quarterback who is just going to play. I think he's going to be 44 or 45 this year. One of the oldest to ever play the game. One of the best. A lot of people call him the greatest of all time. But I thought this was kind of funny. Um, Vitalik Buterin. Um, Vitalik Buterin didn't know, immediately know who Tom Brady was. In fairness, the soon-to-be Hall hmm. of Fame quarterback never made it to the cover of Time. Of course, Vitalik Buterin is on the on the uh, the cover of Time. Um, it, he was he didn't stop the goat from reaching out to another. So Buterin didn't know who he was, poking a bit of fun at himself over his April cover story. Buterin tweeted a collection of tweets that had one thing in common: that he looked like Tom Brady. But a not as quite good version of Tom Brady. My best guess, the Russian. <laughs> Where does that even come from? I don't even understand this. The uh, my best guess, the the Russian Canadian Ethereum creator wrote, uh, was that he was the actor from Mission Impossible, which is pretty cool. If you want to, I mean, you know, I mean Tom Cruise, right? Tom Brady, Tom Cruise, not a bad. I mean, it could be worse. You know, he could have been that guy in the movie that, you know, that was, I don't know, just a lesser, a lesser association. So Tom Brady says, what's up, Vitalik? You may not know me, but I just wanted to say I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you for everything you've built in the world of crypto. Otherwise, um, autograph wouldn't have been possible. Hmm. And hope we get to meet you someday. You're the GOAT. Nice. Vitalik replied with, because uh, he, he, this is all the tweets he put out there, right? I didn't know who Tom Brady was. And then this one here, this is the this is the one right here. Look at this. This is the uh <laughs> oh god. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just bro. Bro look like a dystopian Tom Brady. <laughs> uh the Prince of Crypto looks god. like Tom Brady at the two years of retirement and no weightlifting. <laughs> <laughs> oh bro, he, he goes, uh Tom Brady with the reverse uh Captain America super soldier serum. <laughs> <laughs> reverse so it's so funny i mean you gotta oh give him credit God. he was that he was putting this out there you know he was at least tweeting it out there which was fun and uh there's some more i've never seen a face more deserving of being shoved into a locker my entire life <laughs> oh my god and so you got the best part of it is you got Vitalik tweeting this stuff saying he didn't know who tom brady was uh the guy looks like a clone tom brady keeps locked in his basement to periodically feed to stay youthful <laughs> The feet on. <laughs> the zone said feet on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the oh, the feet on. That's feet on is a useful. The feet on. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have uh, this is Tom oh, Brady yeah. was on dog food. This is if Tom Brady was on dog food. And then uh, how's it possibly this rich and still be ugly? Oh my God, get a hair transplant or Botox <laughs> or a new wardrobe or something. You know. Oh my God. It's I don't even much. know why you show up any too day much. at work. It's like, how important is it? Like, you get that, you get, you're worth billions of dollars. You just like, you're like, you know, I'm just gonna drop out. I'm done. I'm just done. I'm good. That's I got it. like a generation of wealth. I might think of having a family or something I'm along done. those lines, or adopting a bunch of kiddos. I don't know. Malaroche said he may look like Tom's left arm, but about as skinny. <laughs> oh gosh, but you got to um, give him a little bit of credit for for putting that out there. And that's right. There you go, Crypto G. Sam Bankman Freed knows who Tom Brady is. F Damn right he back. is. Damn right he knows man, who he is. Man, Formula One today had crypto.com on the field, had FTX all over the place. Man, Palantir was uh was sponsored, was is a uh, sponsor on the uh sleeves of uh Ferrari. Um, and then we then you have FTX on Hamilton's car, Lewis Hamilton. Man, crypto is all over Formula One right now. Yeah, and it's a massive, massive audience. Look at this. So then Gary Vig, better known as Gary Vyrachek, he said, what's up, Tom? You may not know me, but I just wanted to say I'm a big fan of yours. In fact, I bleed green and dislike playing you 37 times, Expect, expect for the, except for those seven uh, seven of those times. And oh, by one, and one day I will buy the New York Jets and win eight Super Bowls. So Gary V has always been talking about, my buddy's a big, big time uh, New York Jets fan. I'm like, maybe Gary, I, I go, you know, Gary V is going to buy the New York Jets. That's going to happen at mm -hmm. some point. He's going to buy the New York Jets, and the, he turned into a winner. He couldn't be worse. I mean, the, I think the Jets won a game last year out of like 16 games, 17 this year. 
So there's just a big bro fest going on here. And it says Brady has been loud and visible advocate for a cryptocurrency investing last year in FTX, along with his wife, Giselle Bunchen. And earlier this year, sports and entertainment NFT platform Autograph raised $170 million from investors, including Andreessen Horowitz, um, A16 Fund, and Kleiner Perkins. So you know how when he does retire, he's going to play one more year. He just doesn't want to give up yet. But, you know, he's going to be very steeped in crypto. So people might know Tom Brady from from what Autograph does or what he goes on to do in crypto. Then they knew him on the field. Be like, wait a minute, you were a quarterback at one time? And that's kind of how, how it sometimes plays, Jeff. That's right. But I thought that was incredibly... Uh, I mean, Vitalik can poke fun of himself. I got to give a guy a lot of credit because, you know, he knows he gets made fun of. and Oh, yeah. People goof on him from time to time. It happens, Jeff. I mean, it does happen. That's right. It does happen. It happens from time to time. Yeah. And then we have... And then um, here's an interesting story, too. On um, Give me one second, Jeff. Hang on a second. I got to adjust my microphone here. One second. Let me just get this thing. Got to mm. fix this thing up and... Something's not right. There's something's going on check, right here, Jeff. Check, check two check. on the mic. Check two. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So the, the microphone's <laughs> adjusted. So let's look at this story here. This is interesting. It kind of plays into our bank conversation. Banks are restocking gold at a fastest pace in mm. years. So uh, gold vault. they're in the that process of restocking vault. gold at a pace. Well, why would you think that? Well, let's figure out why they might be doing something like that. What are they what are they thinking about, Jeff? Mm. That they're that they're that yeah, they're, I mean. It's a it's an interesting you know thought process based on you know I mean, we're just referencing it. You know one of the bigger issues is the lack of value in the in the paper, and so it's becoming less and less valuable, especially as the government's print. So the government loves to print money, right? <laughs> Who was it? Someone had made a comment and said, "Why do we have to pay taxes if the government can just print the money?" I mean, right. What's a, why don't right. we just print it? Why we, what are we paying taxes for? Just keep printing it. Oh, no, no, no. Can't you're, you're printing it anyways. You're printing it to, into a Bolivian. Jeff, that so, never serves gonna, the serfs. <laughs> keep, but, you know, the banks, you know, bolstering with gold, you know, similar to how Michael Saylor, you know, has been bolstering uh, uh, Bitcoin. And if you want to add some, some long-term store of value to your bottom line, then why not be gold? If you got no gold, you got nothing back in what's sitting in your vault, which is nothing, mm -hmm. you know, then, then you have an issue, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I've been listening to, um, you know, some interesting videos lately, you know, with like Grant Cardone and, and some of these other guys. And, you know, you start really, you know, going full circle here to what banks do with your money, you know, when it comes to real estate and he mm -hmm. talks a lot about real estate. And you put a dollar in and they lend your dollar out nine or 10 times, you know, so what kind of what kind of value, what do they have sitting there other than the, uh, most cases they they've got a lot of people's real estate, you know, that's tied right. up, but that's, you know, so the banks love the real estate, you know, they've got that as a collateral, um, but gold, you know, gold really gold in them, their hills. Yeah. Gold. Well, that's the thing. But the thing is, is as technology changes and evolves, it's incredible as things progress and you go through what, what made sense at one point. That's why I say you really could run a country like a DAO where everybody truly has a voice, every one voice per person. It's a true voting on some of the things that happened. But you know, a couple hundred years ago, you needed somebody to go travel someplace to speak on your behalf. We don't need that anymore. And they don't speak on our behalf. No, no politician speaks on the behalf. There's a handful. You can count them on one hand that, you know, has glimmers of hope where they sometimes feel like they're representing we the people, but it's very infrequent. I thought this was interesting. Tag, this is at Tag XRP, T-A-I-G XRP, put this out. He said, JP Morgan was laundering money through Meritus where Lubin wants to create Ethereum Island and Apollo was involved. Guess who has investments in Apollo real estate? Jay hmm. Clayton, the former hey, chairman that lied about knowing them. And then you have this here. This was on the this was in the Indian Thanks. Express from uh, 2020. Hmm. JP Morgan used sham deals, shell firms, the launder um Irapali, uh home buyers funds to its Maritian uh, Singapore entities. Agency claimed the employees of JP Morgan India, while serving on the board of um, Rapali Silicon City, got the funds of the home buyers diverted for payments 
on interest of CCDs, completely convertible debentures uh, to IPF2 Singapore 1 PT limited to the tune of over, uh, I don't even know what those rupees, uh, 47 quarter during the- 37.31 crow. Crow, there you go. I mean, it's just, Whoa. this is the kind of stuff that's going on. That's what I love about TAG and a lot of every, the other internet sleuths. They're always pulling up this stuff. I mean, it's a story from 2020, but it just goes to show you. There was another one, JP Morgan, Ah, oh, gee, one of the boats they own was trafficking cocaine. You know, it's just like, you know, like it's like, well, it's here's that wrist slap it. That's it. Not a big deal. You you get away with a a wrist slap, and we'll move on. And everybody, don't worry about it. Everything's cool. It's all cool. Amazing. Be cool, really my babies. Amazing. Really, I I, really amazing. When I used to watch Conan O'Brien, he's always be cool, my babies. I used to love that when he said that. It was the greatest thing ever. Be cool, my babies. Uh, there's just so much stuff there. Here's another one. Uh, this one here was, yeah, yeah, no, I don't want to play. That. I've seen enough of that. Uh, uh, but this was interesting. What do you got? Pull this. And I don't hope you're not pulling up what I think you're pulling up. Ah, okay. There you ATMs. Go. Yeah, that's no, awesome. Is, uh, <clears throat> so. So I was looking at this. It's a worldwide map of ATM machines that support XRP. Now, if you ho hover over each pin, you can see the manufacturer and the location. So That's badass. So I zoomed in on. See if we can zoom out. So this is Florida. Okay. This so this is. There you There's go. one right there on Sheridan, uh, right there at the quickie stop. It's interesting, man. You zoom out a little bit. So that's just north of Hollywood. Then if you go a little bit further up to like just north of Sunrise area, you've got one at the Marathon gas station. Let me see if there's anybody that, me. Not much, you know, because as you zoom out from Florida, those are really the only two. Then... You can kind of see there's one over here in uh, Columbia. Got a little, got one over in Texas at the Green Vibes. Got uh, some kind of spattered across over in California. Maybe got yeah, one over here in here. Portugal. Got some stuff like over in, you know, it's kind of, it's interesting. But these are all ATMs that. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. Bucharest. Bulgaria. Pretty impressive. Colombia. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's very interesting. Very interesting, Jeff. Eh, very interesting. Then there's the story here that the is also. Stop coin. <laughs> What's that? The quickie stop. The quickie isn't that... stop coin. <laughs> isn't that the. Uh... Isn't that from the Simpsons? the Simpsons? Yeah, the quickie yeah, stop. The quickie... <laughs> Oscar say not one, not even a single one in uh, Iceland. Don't worry, man. There's nothing in England, nothing in Ireland, nothing in Iceland. Yet. yet nothing yeah. in, in yet. Greenland. <clears throat> yet. Preface it with yet. It's coming. I'm sure that it's going to happen at some yet. point. Nothing in Canada. But, eh, go. Nothing in Canada. We got one in uh, Silver Lake Mall in Spokane, Washington. Look at that. What do you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw a Bitcoin uh, ATM in uh, Detroit. Did you? And what did you do when you saw it? Did a little dance? I did. Do a <laughs> did little a little dance? Dig. You like did a Got little jig? Yeah. Got <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't even know what's going on with some of these stories, man. There's such weird stuff out of that. Like, I just. What's this one with uh, Crypto Eddie with the uh, calculator? Yeah, that was. I heard it talking about the calculator because um, it was. It had to be redone in the calculator. I don't know, Jeff. It was like a lot about numbers. It sounds like work to me. So Play the uh, Garland House video. Where do we have the video? Oh, yeah, let's see. Where's where the Garland? Let's pull that video up. Where the heck is that video, Jeff? Oh, it's the very top. Yeah, that's right. Paul's saying there's tons of Bitcoin ATMs in Michigan. See, Michigan is the next to make Bitcoin legal tender, whether they know it or not. 
There it is. There you go. Man, Red Bull bit the bullet today. Bit Red the Bull. bullet. Man, Verstappen was leading second the Indeed. entire race. Right at the end, had uh, engine complication. And then the uh, second Red Bull car went down. That was pretty pathetic. Well, but we didn't have a Red Bull team. Not a Red Bull, Jeff. To, uh, crypto with Bybit. I thought Red Bull gives you wings. No? Apparently not. Ferrari did the one, too. Look at the way she's looking at you right there, Jeff. Like you've done that something wrong. Podium. Like you've done something oh. naughty. Let's listen in on this, but this is... <laughs> she's just like, really, Jeff? Seriously, Jeff? Really? Seriously? Seriously? Come on. All right. So this is, uh, again, a great, great interview. But this is... Uh, Bloomberg Crypto Report, and here we go. Brad Garlinghouse. Brad, good to have you back here on the show. You called this a victory in your battle against the SEC. What does it mean for you and also the broader crypto industry? Yeah, I, I do think I'll start there, really. I think it is a victory not just for Ripple, the company, but also the whole crypto industry because the SEC, I think, has consistently tried to take point and really take expand their reach and their control over the crypto industry. We've seen that not just with Ripple, but in other cases, and to, to have the executive order, as Shanali was talking about, the executive order came out and really said to all agencies, hey, we need to be coordinated. If we want the United States to be competitive in this key technology platform, mm -hmm. we need to not have one group behaving one way and another group behaving another way. So we're really mm -hmm. pleased by not just the court's decision, but also the executive order that came out last week. What do you make of the very prominent role that crypto is playing in the war on Ukraine and also concerns about how cryptocurrency could be used, for example, as a tool to circumvent sanctions by Russians? You know, Emily, I, I think this is a bit of a red herring, meaning that it, there's a lot of attention around it as like, what does this mean? But the, pra the practicality of using it to circumvent sanctions, I think, is is really difficult. Uh, and it, the reality is that if you just take the basic math, before the invasion of Ukraine, there's about $50 billion a day of Russian ruble cross-border FX trades. There's just not enough liquidity in the crypto market to really put much of a dent in that. Moreover, you know, the, the point at which sanctions are applied is at the end point. So through you know, exchanges, a, a bit stamp or a Binance, and it, you know, I think you've seen globally that the major exchanges around the world say, hey, we're going to, we're going to acknowledge, enforce, and respect those sanctions. And so I think that the idea that crypto is being used at any scale to circumvent sanctions is uh, not, not a really, it's not, it doesn't really understand how some of this stuff works. Exactly, Jeff. Oh, man, you said some really, key, some really key things here. You know, one, you know, really referencing, you know, the entire space, the whole crypto space. And and again, you know, they realize that Ripple is kind of at the forefront right now. They're they're on the front lines fighting a battle. Everyone's mm -hmm. kind of you know is just kind of sitting back, and you know, and, and it, man, you would think that they would have a huge amount of of stress to say, hey, we're we're the ones that are getting you know beaten up here, but they're taking it, man, and and they're enjoying every last second of being on the front line. And then you know, not only are they out there but they're dishing it out. <laughs> Does it look like a company that's slowing down? Does Brad look worried at all? I mean, is it, I mean, a, it's like, it's almost like, is it really going on? But it's so funny that the yeah. news networks always lob those same, same bombs. Mm -hmm. But what about this? What about the uh, circumventing this? What about that? You know, it is the wild, wild west and all these, all these tired analogies that is, you would expect to be peddled by Congress, but not necessarily, it's getting a little old in the media. And I thought that Brad Garlinghouse handled that beautifully. I thought it is a sweet mm -hmm. place. He looks like he has in Miami. He was down here last week doing this interview. And uh, we didn't get a call or anything, Jeff, to go hang, to be on the podcast, nothing. So, Yeah, what's up with that? I don't know. I don't know. I can't. And then uh, I came up the other night with David Schwartz. Like uh, you and I teach. both invited him on. We had some friendly discourse with him. And then he just took off. There's nothing to that. I can show that tweet, too. And we got to get brad and uh david schwartz on at the same time especially it's easier if we for them the to go non-friendly places they should go on places that are not not as friendly jeff too friendly over here but yeah we would ask some tough questions too but not like the bitcoin maxis where they go like hey buddy tell me why uh xrp is a banker coin it's it's the most centralized coin right that's just some of the questions they get asked on other podcasts 
Exactly. So Vince724, what is up? Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Let's listen to the rest of this. All right. On one hand, you do have plenty of exchanges that seem to be working with the Biden administration to uh, kind of figure out what's going on under the surface in the market. But on the other hand, when it comes to the SEC, it seems like they've been at the crosshairs of a number of different firms. Do you think the SEC is taking a tougher stance than the administration at large? And do you think that will hinder at all some of the progress that some firms are making? Hmm. Look, I think there's no question that the United States Security Exchange Commission has reduced the competitiveness of this critical industry in the United States. Boom. I think they've been out of step, not just with other parts of the U.S. government, but they've been others out of step with other major economies around the world. The only country in the world that considers XRP, the digital asset that Ripple uses in our technology stack, the only country in the world that thinks XRP could be a security is the United States. We work successfully in the UK, in Switzerland, in Japan, in the UAE, in Singapore. All of these countries have acknowledged that XRP is a currency because that's how it's used. So I think the way the US, if we want the US to be a leader in this new growing critical innovative do, industry, do, do. like the internet 20 we years really ago, do. we need that regulatory clarity. And the SEC is really just coming out at saying that we're gonna file lawsuits, enforcement. We're not gonna provide clear rules so that people know how to operate as other countries have done. Man, Damn. hits it out of the park, out of step, out of sync with reality. Out of <laughs> touch is another way it's to say it, Jeff. Completely out of touch, but it's from the top, you know, all the way from the top. I'm glad they put that picture of, uh, of Biden up there, you know, with his executive order, because that's the only way they know how to uh, rule. It's rule with a fist, executive order, and Gary Gensler with enforcement. Um, then you had the infrastructure, you know, quasi infrastructure bill where they're trying to cram crypto legislation in at the midnight hour, you know, not letting anybody know what it is because you got to read the bill or you got to vote on the bill, pass the bill to see what's in it. Like all sorts of chaos. Uh, are these the people that you want representing us, you know, for the best outcome of cryptocurrency? I, I really don't think so. And, you know, I think Brad Garlinghouse is hitting it right out of the park because this is this becomes bipartisan in nature, you know, because it's cryptocurrency, it's economics, you know, and you got to really make sure that you're, you know, supporting those that really are going to end up supporting your technology. And right now, the powers that be are not supporting the technology. Yeah, well said, Jeff. I know we don't have a lot of time here, but I thought I'd just throw this up there. But so. Um... There's a, oh, wait a minute. That's your screen. I was like, what the my heck, screen. Jeff? Throw my yeah, screen so up again. So why am I putting up Throwing your screen Throwing a rumble there? up there. <laughs> Got a rumble? Let me put that up there. Rumble. Rumble, rumble baby. <laughs> so look at this. Uh, so Jungle Inc. put this tweet out that said, new California bill would impose a 25% gain tax on house flippers. And I was like, no. you know, it's interesting how California keeps destroying itself. People are fed up. Man. Leaving California in droves to Arizona and Texas. These people stay... People who stay keep voting for politicians and their destructive policies. You get what you vote for. And so I love this uh, comment by Wyoming Crypto Capital. It says, I live in the best kept secret in America, but I won't tell you where. Top secret. <laughs> so I said, it wouldn't be Wyoming, would it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. He's like, ooh, you're good. You're, you're, you're good, man. You're good. You're, you're, you're good. That's funny. Yeah. So there you go. And. I don't know, that dude's like just, just causing seizures left and right, man. And dude, anyway, what is up with the XR Doge? XR Doge, yeah. We're going to have XR Doge. Uh, we're going to have him on the, on the program, Jeff. Thursday XR night, Doge. they will be here. Going to talk about XR, XR Doge. Doge on the show Thursday night. XR gonna Doge going to talk about it. I don't know what it is exactly, but we're going to talk about built the, on XR the XRP Doge. Doge. XR Doge. XRPL. It's built on the XRPL, Jeff. It's on the XRPL and it's called the XR Doge. XR Doge. I like the sound of that. Uh, all right. Cool. So, yeah. So let's. Um, in Wyoming. <laughs> it's Wyoming. On, I love Wyoming. Not the winter, it's summer. That's it. Wyoming. Yeah. There's some other good. There's a lot of stuff good going on there. But anyway, that's, uh, that's all we have tonight, Jeff. I'm glad you uh, spoke sparingly and your voice lasted the entire uh the entire show that's all we pretty much have for you guys we will be back here again tomorrow night for another fantastic show where we will uncover and look to see what is out there that's happening 
in blockchain, cryptocurrency, XRP, Ripple, SEC. We'll get into all of that like we normally do. And Jeff, anything else before we get out of here? Sunglasses Thursday. It's a good idea, Jeff. That's a very good idea. That's Crypto G. We got it. That's that's another great idea. XR Doge dump months ago. So we'll find out. We're bringing them on Thursday. We're going to hear all there is to know about the Doge on Thursday. I hate the when you think Doge. there's there's a little bit of drink left in there. You don't think there's like and, droplets and you yeah, push and it back too more. fast and it goes all <laughs> oh, over yourself. Well, that happens, awesome. Jeff. So anyway, guys, that's all we have. We will see you on the next one. Chip and Jeff out. Take care, guys. Out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.